Greetings viewers and welcome to today's info sharing session. We'll be covering the tier 2 level of access permissions within Sage Trinity Evolution. Now as you know when creating an agent within Evolution database you are able to allocate certain access permissions and rights to the user per module and these access permissions will determine which functionality and features the user is able to perform within the application. So for example if I go to an existing user and I'm going to edit that particular user we then have an access permissions option on the user profile. So we've got our access permissions and we then have a list of all the available modules and if I for example expand the module I'm then able to go to each particular feature and then specify certain access permissions for the agent. So for example, under maintenance, I can set up, for example, various permissions with regards to the creating of master file records. If I then go to inventory, you'll see that we've got different permissions per source document. For example, invoice permissions, return to supplier permissions, credit note permissions, etc. And if I were to expand the invoice permission section, I've got options there which I can access and really it's simply a case of selecting or deselecting the option and that will determine if the agent can or cannot perform that particular function. So as you can see, a very detailed and concise method of allocating access permissions to agents. Today's presentation will focus on the tier two access permissions within evolution and these tier 2 access permissions work in conjunction with our level 1 access permissions. The tier 2 access permissions concern retail point of sale, various defaults, batch defaults and purchase order authorization. So I'm going to start off with retail point of sale. I'm going to access that particular option and the retail point of sale tier 2 options concern the processing of dockets within the retail point of sale environment. So firstly, we've got details about the line discounts that the agent can allocate when processing a docket. We're also able to allocate a default tilt to a specific user. And within the retail point of sale environment, we are able to customize a retail pause menu screen. And if required, you are then able to allocate that particular layout that you've customized to an agent. The retail point of sale module works in conjunction with multi warehousing. So at this point, I'm able to determine which warehouses the agent will be able to view and under the visible warehouses option, and I can simply select the drop down and determine which warehouses will be visible to that agent process in transactions. The next option we've got is under our defaults. And within each module, we have got a default setup and we can then focus further on the tier two defaults options on the access permissions. So once again, we've got the details about line discounts and discount percentages on customer documents. We can also allocate a default rep to the agent and also very useful accessible reps. So for example, there may be instances where an agent is processing transactions on behalf of reps and you can then determine which reps the agent can process transactions for. On the project side, we're able to allocate a default project to the agent and also accessible projects. So, Within the database, you may have multiple projects being worked on. However, you are able to then determine that the agent can only, for example, access projects that they are involved in. And on the drop down, simply specify the projects that the agent does have access to. Under the incident defaults, this concerns the resolve or the contact management module, and you can then able to specify default incident type group so that when the agent processes an incident, it will default to the group that's specified under their profile. We then have a section on warehousing defaults. 
So at this point, I'm able to specify a default warehouse for the agent. And I'm also able to force a warehouse with agent when processing transactions. Under accessible warehouses, we've got three options, which are purchases, sales, and other transactions. So purchases, once again, is when goods are being purchased or brought into the system via GRV or a supplier invoice. I'm able to determine which warehouses that those goods can be booked into. So for example, you may have a centralized warehouse. When goods are purchased or received, they will then be booked in the centralized warehouse. And then from there, they could then be transferred or moved within the organization via an IBT, which is interbranch transfer, or else a warehouse transfer. The sales option is about the selling of goods. So for example, you may want to restrict the warehouses from which an agent is able to sell items when processing customer transactions. And then other transactions relate to the movement of goods within the organization. So these include IBT being interbranch transfers, as well as warehouse transfers. And once again, we are able to determine which warehouses the agent will have access to in processing those types of transactions. Within the database, you are able to allocate groups to customers and suppliers. And once again, you are able to determine which groups on customers and suppliers the agent does have access to, as well as the ability to include customers and suppliers which are not linked to groups. And what you notice is that these options are applicable to reports, and on the grouping side for customers and suppliers, it's applicable to inquiries as well as to reports. On the batch default section, this section relates to cash book batch permissions as well as general ledger journal batch permissions. And the four options there are agent can see all batches, agent can see own batches only, agent cannot see any batches or make use of the group defaults. So within the organization, you may have agents which are, who are processing cash book or general ledger journal batches with different types of information. And you may want to restrict access or visibility to those batches. So it's really simply a case of specifying the batch defaults tab and then determining which of the four options are applicable to cash book as well as general ledger batch permissions. The purchase order section deals with the purchase order authorization process within the application. So within an organization, you may want to control the purchasing of goods from suppliers and we can then implement, implement purchase order authorization. So three options there being never requires authorization, always requires authorization, or authorization required over a specific limit. So depending on what the control measures are with regards to ordering of items, you can implement one of those three options. The PO authorization works in conjunction with Resolve contact management and therefore we need to specify an incident type when using the peer authorization feature. So I've specified my incident type here, and I'm just going to simply edit this incident type. And do note that when creating a PO or authorization type, you need to mark the incident type as being a purchase order incident type in order to make use of this incident type when using PO authorizations. So as you can see, under access permissions, we've got the tier one level or the main level of access permissions, which are very detailed and can be concisely implemented to determine which features of functionality the agent can or cannot perform per module. And then on level two, we've got the various options which we've just covered. Let's just do a quick recap. So for level two, we've got our retail point of sale, which is about the processing of dockets within the retail point of sale environment. For example, details about selecting a default till, retail point of sale menu, as well as visible warehousing. On the default side, we can implement information about sales reps, defaults, accessible reps, as well as default projects, accessible projects. 
We've also got the ability to specify default incident type group. And on the warehousing side, we can access or limit the accessibility of an agent to various warehouses when purchasing items, selling of goods, and other transactions being the movement of items within the organization. On the customer groups and supplier groups, once again, we can access or we can limit accessibility to certain groups, as well as including uh, customers or suppliers which aren't linked to groups. And this information applies to reports as well as to inquiries. The batch default section is specific to cash book batch permissions as well as general ledger journal batch permissions. And we've got four options there, which will determine the visibility of batches and also if group defaults are to be used. The purchase order section deals with the PO authorization feature. Got a couple of options there which can be implemented depending on your controlling mechanisms when ordering items from suppliers and also ensuring that you've linked a relevant incident type to the PO authorization process. I do hope you've enjoyed our presentation today. Thank you for watching. It's over and out from me and goodbye.